It would be right and proper for us, Lord, to spend a lot of our time, most of our time, just adoring you, telling you how wonderful you are, majestic, powerful, loving, kind, glorious, for truly you are. We know we cannot add anything to you or take anything away from you. And certainly you are what we need. Lord Jesus, I ask that as we prepare ourselves today to eat of the bread and drink of the cup, that we would take a few moments to examine ourselves first. That is what you've told us to do. Realize our unworthiness, and that will increase our adoration and our gratitude for what you have done for us. Amen. All right, please have a seat. I'm going to ask Wayne and Jim to come up. We're going to do uh, some extra readings today. They're all from the Bible. This is something I found as a uh, alternative to what we might usually do for communion. But more Bible reading is good, right? All right. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain, that is, his body. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. The Disciples' Prayer Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins... Your Father will not forgive your sins. For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. After that he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. 
And last of all, he appeared to be also as one abnormally born. And when the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, <clears throat> he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Then I saw a lamb, looking as if it had been slain, standing in the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. He had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open the seals, because you were slain. And with your blood you purchased for God members of every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. Then I looked and saw the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands and ten thousand times ten thousand. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and heaven and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying to him who si- wait a minute you really really want to hear me read this do you i don't know what an angel choir might sound like but it might sound like this to him who sits on the to throne him who sits and to the, the lamb and to the lamb be praised and honor and glory and power to him who sits on the throne and and to the Lamb and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever forever and ever forever and ever
At this time, we're going to pray, and then Jim, are going, Jim and Wayne are going to serve you in your seats. Lord, as you have instructed us now, in remembrance of Jesus, his broken body, and his shed blood, we eat and drink with grateful hearts. 